Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of the Bad Times Good Stories Podcast. My name is Joe Flanders. I hope you're having a great day, whether you're listening to this or watching it. If you're listening, wondering, how can I watch it? How can I look at Joe's beautiful face? Go to youtube.com slash the Joe Flanders, where you can watch all upcoming episodes of the show. We are filming it now. If you're already watching this, good job. This is a rather redundant message for you. Today on the show is comedian Robin Tran, and I'm really excited to have her on. She's got a lot going on. Um, we talk about her losing her virginity, and she didn't even know she was going to that night, uh, her fear of driving, and her transition, and her family's reaction, and her girlfriend's reaction. It's, uh, it's a really great episode. She, like I said, she's got a lot going on right now. She has a Hulu special out right now called Comedy Invasion. So look that up on Hulu. You can also just search Robin Tran and find that. She was also recently on Comedy Central's Roast Battles, hosted by Jeff Ross. And uh, she's just killing it. So it was a really great conversation. Um, I appreciate her being open and honest about her transition. I asked some maybe dumb questions, but as somebody who's never really had a chance to talk to somebody who's been through that, I was really curious. And uh, I appreciate her open and honest conversation. If you enjoyed today's episode, or even if you don't, lie and say you did, uh, give us a rating on iTunes. Give us that five-star rating. It really helps us book guests, get sponsors, continue to grow the show. Um, it really means a lot when you guys do that. It's nice to read the comments. It makes me feel like I'm not just throwing this out into the void. And uh, so selfishly, I enjoy reading your comments. So go ahead, give us that rating on iTunes. You can also check out badtimesgoodstoriespod.com and look at the merch we've got. Some really fun, sexy merch. Um, there's also a link to the Patreon page so you can support us doing this show. It's not just me anymore. I have a producer, Chris, and he's also not getting paid. And he's killing it. Uh, you maybe not wanted me to say that. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> I know. With the. Okay. Yeah, it's all good. So help us just pay for lunch. How about that? Anyway, you can find the Patreon link through the Bad Times Good Stories Pod.com site. And if you've been through any bad times that would make a good story, email me at Bad Times Good Stories Podcast at gmail.com. That is enough rambling from me. Without further ado, here is my conversation with Robin Tran. Oh, go ahead. I don't mind. Oh, I'm jealous, man. I can't do that stuff anymore. Oh, it's just nicotine. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I thought That's it was fun. marijuana. Oh, okay. No. If I did that, then I talk about silences. I yeah. would be uh, <laughs> just <lenient. laughs> not because of your story, but no. I just turned into a moron. <laughs> this is really boring. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> no, not because of that. Yeah. Just I just I've since college. I just I can't do weed anymore. Oh, really? Yeah. Somebody. I'm sure if I did the research and found the proper strain or you know whatever and yeah. I just, every time I just turn into a complete moron. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just, you know, it was fun in college to just sit in my dorm room and eat star crunches for like six right. hours and, yeah. you know, but now I just, I, 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 I think it's just like the, I don't like the idea of losing control. Right. A little bit. Yeah. You know? And I no, just feel like it I, made me a puddle for five years. I had a marijuana substance abuse issue. I didn't know it was an abuse issue. Yeah. Until like people were like, you haven't gotten out of bed for like five years. And I was like, well, that that means like I win in life, you know, like you you're all with your minimalist. I'm like minimalist. Right. That's why I convinced myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it was like severe depression. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I guess quit smoking marijuana about like a year ago. I smoke like once a month. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it kind of turns it, me into a Do you do it now more like socially or just like... No, just like to just yourself. chill out a little yeah. bit. Yeah. If you catch yourself just like getting angsty. Getting a little angsty, yeah. Yeah. When was that moment that you did realize like, oh, this is a problem? <laughs> when my girlfriend was like, hey, this is a problem. <laughs> 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 I had no idea it was a problem. <laughs> I thought it was okay to just rewatch Dawson's Creek and Buffy for like the sixth time while you're smoking pot. Like, uh. 
<laughs> you get a, you get something new out of it every time you watch it. You know, so you don't. <laughs> it's pretty surface yeah, level. Yeah, it's pretty surface level. <laughs> what they're saying is what they mean. Yeah. yeah, you know? yeah. Do you get extra excited when you watch it? Do you see that, that the meme episode where he starts crying? Oh yeah, I love that part. That's got to be like, oh, it's the babe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's about to break his heart right now. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> How did funny. that show end up? Who ended up with uh, Joey? Joey ended up with uh, Pacey, oh. and Dawson became a director or a producer or something. Yeah, and he like loves the TV show. The TV show is about him and Joey. Oh no, Pacey and Joey love the TV show. Okay, so everyone is happy with like you know. Huh. The, the, it's like a happy ending for everyone. Right. Does Until anyone, Dawson care, does anyone care about Dawson's Creek? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Oh, okay. Oh, come on. We're in like full 90s like yeah. nostalgia mode these days. Yeah. Everything's, they're either bringing something back. All these shows they're bringing back. Yeah, they should just run a Super Mario Brothers 3 shirt. Right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for, for office. <laughs> it would win. It oh, would. it's the raccoon suit. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I bought one of those Nintendo classics. Oh, really? Like, you know, those it's they have all the games preloaded. Oh, them. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got one. Amazon has that um, deals truck. I don't know if you know about this. You sign mm. up for it and they'll just throw random ob- or one random object, a bunch of them into the truck and drive around and it'll be like a discounted thing. So, oh, wow. So like I've gotten ones where it's been like, you know, four pounds of ribs for 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah. And then the next week it was Nintendo Classic. Oh, wow. So uh, you order it online, uh, you know, on the app and then you just go and pick it up. Yeah. And they go to like eight different stops around the city every day. Oh, wow. Uh, Do you play it? I do sometimes, but then I remind myself, I'm like, oh, the reason I haven't owned a video game console since 64 was because I get really irritated and angry. Yeah. So like the nostalgia is there when I look at it and when I hear the music for Super Mario. Yeah. But then when I die, yeah, I get really angry. I get me, I, yeah, that happens <laughs> to me too. I'm the same exact way. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's fun to look at. It's a nice like party thing. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, you can. But the, the cord, they're smart because the cord's only like two feet long so yeah like st- <laughs> so i think they want you to buy like some you know oh yeah additional extender, yeah accessory or something yeah sons of bitches i had a co-worker that she and i would always flirt but i i don't think we were each other's first choice mm-hmm. so, so you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. so it would always be like we should hang out sometime <laughs> and then like yeah let's hang out sometime i always i thought she was really cute but you know what i mean like it's just something didn't really click all the way but then one day we were just <laughs> both like you know what let's go to a, let's go to a restaurant tonight mm-hmm. like and it's like okay we're gonna do this and i'm like wow this is really gonna it's finally really gonna happen. happen right was it and sorry to interrupt but it's one of those things where it just took both of you being at the same sort of Maybe desperation is too strong of a word. I think but loneliness, loneliness, and desperation. Desperation is fair. Yeah, is that fair? <laughs> I would okay. say that's yeah. a fair word. I feel like I, I definitely have had people in my life like that, where it's like you flirt, and then you're like, "Well, I got something going on with this person, so yeah. maybe some other time, yeah. other person." <laughs> and then eventually, it's just a matter of getting on the same wavelength, where it's like, "Yeah, okay, we're both desperate." <laughs> yeah, we're both desperate, and I was a virgin at the time. Okay, I was desperate to lose my virginity. It was like late. I was like 24 or you're something. 24. Okay, yeah, I was like, it was like. I was getting there. And, was it uh, really starting to build up? Like the like, I need to get laid. I need like, to, yeah, I need to get laid. Well, mostly because everyone told me I had to. Right. And then the more I didn't, the more I got was like a loser, you know. Right. So I remember when we were just emailing emailing each other at work, which is like not allowed, but we were just that's how desperate and lonely we were. <laughs> we just emailing each other at work. <laughs> hey, let's go to this Mexican restaurant, you know. And so yeah, so I went to her place, and uh, she she showed me you know her house, and then we went to the. Mexican restaurant and she got like she was getting really drunk yeah and then like kind of more flirty and stuff mm-hmm. you know and then I was like oh this is this is cool you know she's pretty cute and then I was I was starting to get really into her yeah and I was just thinking like maybe this is the night were you maybe, also drinking no okay. I had to okay. drive you know oh sure but I was like maybe this is maybe this is the night I can't wait you know and um and then uh I remember we were driving back to her place and uh she invited me into um, her bedroom and she, she's like, hey, you know, oh, no, she, you know, she said, she goes, hey, let's go back to my place and we can play Mario 64. And I was thinking like, oh, man, I wanted to have sex, you know, but that's cool. Let's play Mario 64. Right. That's, that's awesome. You yeah, know, so and then I stopped thinking about sex completely. I was sure. thinking about Mario 64. Right. And then uh, Mario Kart 64, actually. Oh, okay. yeah. And uh, went back to her place and uh, she's like, OK, let's come up to my bedroom. We'll play Mario Kart 64. 
And I'm like, okay. So I get to her bedroom. There are no chairs. There's just a bed. <laughs> and then she's, and I'm like, oh, do I have to sit on the floor? Right. And she's like, no, just sit on the bed with me. And I didn't want to like overstep my bounds, you sure. know? Yeah. So I like sit on the edge of the bed, like the corner of the bed, <laughs> like all the way away from her. And she's like looking like kind of a, like confused and annoyed, you know? Yeah. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, are we going to play Mario Kart 64? And she's like, I don't have the controllers, actually. I forgot I don't have controllers for it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, I really wanted to play, you know? And, she, <laughs> and, she, and she's like, well, let's just, you know, we'll just talk and we'll see, like, what happens. And I, I was like, oh, okay. So I stayed on the corner of the bed and I was wondering, like, oh, she didn't, she didn't want to do anything because she wanted to play Mario Kart 64. Right. So we talked for, like... <laughs> two hours yeah. just talked about stuff yeah. she was kind of moving cl closer and just kind of getting like you know buddy buddy like punch you in the arm kind of like you oh know, yeah hey, yeah 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 like just getting more and more like close and closer and then i was like okay well it's getting late you know <laughs> i have to get i have to get back to you know yeah, to get home going because yeah, we have work right and she was oh okay she sounded kind of confused then went back downstairs and gave her a gave her a hug she gave me like a big hug you know yeah and I was like, thanks for showing me your place. Next time, get some controllers, you know? <laughs> yeah. We'll play Mario Kart 64 together. And she's thinking, this guy is so dense. Yeah, 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 yeah. This there was never Mario Kart. <laughs> yeah, this is like way before my transition. Yeah, so right. I was like, and then I drove home and I thought to myself, like, that was weird, you know? Why didn't she make a move? <laughs> <laughs> Like, I was like wondering why all night long, why didn't she make a move? <laughs> Because I don't know what a move looked like, sure. I guess, because yeah. I was a virgin. So right. I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, I guess that was one opportunity that I blew for sex. You know, yeah. I have a lot of those moments. <laughs> yeah, I blew a lot of opportunities for sex. Did you feel like you blew it or was it just like, well, I guess she just decided not to. She didn't want to. Oh, well, <laughs> you know what? I think it was more that. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what I thought afterwards. Right. Because I don't think I immediately thought, you know about like why didn't we have sex i don't know what i thought afterwards i just thought yeah. like that was a weird day why didn't she have the controllers you know right yeah why did she want me in her bedroom why would she suggest we play mario kart if she doesn't <laughs> have controllers yeah like i was what just a, a really really weird <laughs> in yeah. hindsight do you think when she said oh i don't have any controllers you think she did it in kind of like a flirtatious way of just like letting you oh, know oh yeah <laughs> you know? that would be that would have been obvious <laughs> and you just weren't aware to pick up those sides yeah i was so <laughs> i was so hyper aware of not being a creep right and uh that's good it's good but it, it gets yeah, but it yeah. it's there is a level that is not cool right you know that you're actually insulting somebody who's right. like essentially throwing themselves at you and it wasn't even like I was her first choice. Again, we were like <laughs> we were like each other's like fifth choice, you know. So like for her to throw herself at me, and then for me to reject her, I think that was a really we never hung out again. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, I was really <laughs> bummed out by that because I tried hanging out with her again, and she's like, No, I don't know. And I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. She's like, I'm not gonna go through that again. Yeah. <laughs> what more do I have to do? Yeah. I just wasted three, four hours of my life <laughs> so that my my fifth choice can reject me. Yeah, there's yeah. another time that I just remembered Yeah, where uh, I picked up this girl because she, um, I, I'm going to change a little few details so she doesn't he ever hear this. Sure. I had to pick her up somewhere because she was feeling sick. Mm -hmm. And uh, wait, I get back to, I, I drive to her place mm. uh, and she goes, oh, I left my key inside my house. I can't sleep there tonight. And I'm like, oh, well, I don't have any money for a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> and then she goes well i i mean i i i'm sorry i don't know where i can sleep you know and then i was like well maybe you can sleep in my room and she goes yeah that's that's great she was like really excited about it right but the second we go into my bedroom i was so i was so again didn't want to be a creep that i went into like the garage and i pulled out a mattress and i threw it on the floor and i said you can sleep on my bed and I'll sleep on the floor. <laughs> and then like, we're, we're trying to sleep. And a few minutes later, she goes, what are you doing down, down there? Just like, just come into bed with me. Right. And I'm like, okay. So I, when I come into bed with her, you know, those long body pillows. Yeah. Yeah. I put it in between us oh, <laughs> just, <laughs> just so that she knew, so that she knew, Hey, uh, 
I'm not trying to make a move on you, you know? <laughs> I found out years later that she was really, you know, it took me like five years to figure it out. <laughs> I emailed her one day, you know, after like I came out just so I can tell her, hey, I came out. And I was like, hey, you know, back, remember that night in my bedroom? She goes, yes, of course. I was waiting for you to kiss me. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I did a lot of that stuff. <laughs> oh, you, how many times did this happen? A you lot. A, a lot. lot. Yeah, yeah, a lot. It happened a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's. I remember, I guess this is really short, but I was at, I worked at Target mm -hmm. and a really cute girl that I had a crush on hold, held up a hanger. Oh, no, I know I did this. I held up a hanger and I said, hey, let's hang out. <laughs> and she goes, okay. Wow. And I, and I was like, yeah. Okay. I walked away. I'm like, oh, she got the joke. <laughs> and then I never asked her. Never, <laughs> I never asked her out. <laughs> and clearly she was into you. If yeah. You were gonna make, she told she, me years later, I had a crush on you. Right. I was waiting for you to. She would have to have, if, you know, she responded positively to that joke. <laughs> yeah. Which don't get me wrong. It's it, my kind of joke. Yeah. But, uh, you know. <laughs> the way the way I lost my virginity is pretty similar. Um, I had been seeing my girlfriend. No, no this is my current girlfriend. Mm. Um we were seeing each other for a few months and she didn't want to be the one that took my virginity. Yeah. Because you know, she, she has a whole joke about, it. I won't do it, but it's about her vagina being janky and stuff. Is she and, also a comedian? Yeah. She's also oh, okay. a comedian. Yeah. Fantastic. So she does a material about that. Yeah. And, um, she told me to go out there and kick a few tires. That's how she worded it. <laughs> nice and romantic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice and romantic, you know? <laughs> and I did, and you know, I, I, I hung out with some girls and I didn't really, have a great time you know i used to talk about kate the whole time so like a few months later kate sends me a text message a text message yeah and she goes hey i live by myself and i want you to come over to my apartment this weekend so we can write together wingy face and that was like i was like man i love writing you know <laughs> so i like i went to the store and i bought like a new backpack and i bought new a new uh, notebook and <laughs> pens and papers and note cards and uh, a highlighter right there with the kids getting their back to school supplies. <laughs> yeah. I'm going uh, on a writing trip. Yeah. <laughs> and I went up to her apartment that weekend with my backpack. The joke I do is that I look like the little fat kid from up, you know, like I was like, yeah, we're going to write. Yeah. When I get there, uh, Kate is sitting on the floor. Okay. And she's got her bathrobe open where her boobs are sticking out mm -hmm. and she's really stoned. And I was, all I was thinking was like, man, she's in no shape to write whatsoever. <laughs> you know, like, is she going <laughs> to, <laughs> I was like, man, is she going to put her, her clothes on so we can write together? This is like, appropriate for writing? Yeah, this is not appropriate for writing at all. <laughs> and then so I smoke a little bit of the pot. Yeah. And then I started getting, you know, like my inhibition started going away. Yeah. I figured it out a little bit. I, just, I wanted to get some dirty talk going and I just want, I really want to kind of cuss. Yeah, yeah. I really want to fuck you. And to my surprise, she goes like, okay. And all I, th I thought was, Oh man, she said yes. Like I, I wasn't expecting that. Like, what do I do now? You know? Yeah. And then so we go into the bedroom and we just have like really awkward sex. Sure. Yeah. And uh, that was uh, January third, twenty thirteen, two forty three p.m. <laughs> <laughs> I time stamped it, and it was like, <laughs> and it was afternoon delight too. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And that was when I lost my virginity, <laughs> and now we've been together ever since. That's fantastic. Yeah. What did you guys do right after you? Finished. Oh, so we finished and we, <laughs> what, like two fifty? Yeah, <laughs> we both showered. Uh, we watched uh, <laughs> Dane Cook's Torgasm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> A little cuddle sesh with Dane. Yeah, Cook. we watched Dane Cook's <laughs> Torgasm, and then we went to an open mic together. Uh huh called a tickless comedy room uh -huh. it was in the back of a sober living home where you have to go through this alley it was like you know this open mic we all went sure, to yeah. and i had my notebook of all my jokes mm -hmm. about being a virgin <laughs> and when i went on stage i just took my notebook and i threw it across the room <laughs> <laughs> and i said well and that's how i told everyone that i lost my virginity <laughs> on stage i was on stage i'm sure you had a big grin on your face yeah i had a, and also like this like i have no idea what to talk about now right because uh, i lost my i lost all my material wow and then now, now i gotta start over again so afterwards like right afterwards was it what were your feeling was it like equal parts relief or and happy that it was with somebody that you cared about or? i was happy that it was with somebody that i trusted mm -hmm. because i it turns out I don't really like, this is going to get kind of graphic. That's I don't I, really like sex using my dick. Mm -hmm. 
it just makes it, it feels weird, you know. Mm. And it was, it would be like that with anybody, you right. know. So like, all, all I I really felt was like maybe people can shut the fuck up now because I lost my virginity, you know. Yeah. Which is probably not a great response to it, you know. But right. um, I also felt like okay, you know, it happened, but it it didn't fill the hole in my heart, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that hole in your heart yeah. that you have because you're depressed or whatever. And that was like. That's what I told her afterwards. I'm like, oh, I didn't, I guess the sex doesn't fill the hole in your heart. And she goes, no, it doesn't. But like my friends made it seem like sex would do that. Right. And it didn't. So. Yeah. Was that a little disappointing? Yeah. 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 It bummed me I out. I think. I yeah. was like, man, I, what do I do now to try to fill the hole in my heart? You know? Right. I've got to work on myself. That's, that's shitty. That's the worst. Yeah. Yeah. After you're done with drugs or sex or whatever, and you're just like, oh no, I'm still unhappy. Yeah. I got to, I got to do the work. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Was this before you had transitioned? Yeah, this is way before I transitioned. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um when 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 did you? Oh, uh February of 2015. Okay. So I lost my virginity in 2013. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um and and your girl you're still with the same girl yeah. through that whole process, right? Yeah. She stuck with me, yeah. Wow. That's really that's really awesome. Yeah. Frameless. When I met when I met her family, um it was I was the only Asian person in this like entire state, you know, it was either Maine or Vermont. It was one of those, one of those states, you right. know, can't tell them apart, you know, <laughs> you were either in Maine yeah, or Vermont. Yeah, I can't tell them apart. <laughs> nah. Um, and, uh, so th- this is what happens. And, uh, by the way, I've told this story on stage. I tell it in my Hulu special and recently the past two or three days, the people that it's about, even though I changed the names and the identities, yeah, I found out that they have unfriended me. They have spread all these things about how I've made fun of a little girl uh-huh. on my special, okay, and how um, I'm basically like out of the family now because I told these stories on stage, and like they claim it never happened. So, wow. um, so I'm doubling down. Good, I'm t- <laughs> good, <laughs> because I, at first I felt really apologetic, sure, and then I got blocked because my girlfriend confronted confronted them about it and they blocked me too and i'm like i didn't do anything right so now fuck you guys so like i'm gonna tell the story as much as i want absolutely okay and this is not even that big of a deal like anyway whatever yeah this is what this is what happened this is i met her niece Mm -hmm. and her niece was like this troublemaker this is years ago she was like 10 years old okay she looks at both of us and she goes why are you with this guy this is before my transition. Right. And my girlfriend goes, because I love him. But she's like horrified by that question. And she, and then the little girl goes, because you two don't look the same at all. Oh, God. <laughs> and oh. then she makes, and then I was like, well, it's not meaning to, but it's a little racist, right? right. Like that's what, that's what I, I can't interpret it any other way than it's like this cute, naive racism. Right. Um, and she keeps tell she keeps reminding me the whole trip how different I look. <laughs> are, they, are they all like wasps? <laughs> no, they're all just they're all white. They're all white, and I'm not. Right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, this little girl, like, she starts asking me questions, like, "Hey, when Kate dumps you?" And I, I'd be like, "Hey, don't start a sentence like that. <laughs> no, <laughs> not a good way to start a sentence. Not at all." And she goes, "Like, when you're dumped, do you become like a garbage person because you're dumped?" What? The- <laughs> oh. right oh. you're dumped you're a garbage person oh. and then it kind of made me laugh yeah like, yeah, like, yeah. Called, called, called a garbage person <laughs> you know um but i'm still like annoyed by this little girl right so she calls everything like garbage because she got a laugh out of me so now like oh she oh i said oh i made robert laugh because a garbage person so right. she starts going like oh this this train set is garbage and it's like during christmas and yeah. she, this this whatever is garbage and anyway so the rest of the family, um, they're, they're really trying to make me feel like welcome. Okay. That's good. Like overly welcome. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, like we love Asians kind of thing. And, um, that's what I mean by well-intentioned liberals. Mm. Like, you know, they can be racist too, you know, right. because it's like, just treat me like the same person, but they take me to a sushi restaurant <laughs> on Christmas right. and they, they go there every year. Oh, okay. All right. But, but, but they still go like, look at me. They're like, huh? You know? Yeah. See? And I'm like, well, I'm not exactly. I'm like Vietnamese, you know, but it's pretty <laughs> yeah. close enough, you know? And then, um, the uncle starts doing this weird thing where he starts 
asking me like what race the other Asians are in the restaurant. He starts quizzing me. God. He starts like going like, hey, what race is he? What race is she? Uh-huh. Whatever is that? And then I was... I was like, I don't know. I can't tell other Asians apart. And this isn't a parlor trick. Yeah, we yeah. all know. And we- he goes, get the fuck out of here. What? <laughs> he thinks I'm like, he thinks I'm like fucking with him. So he brings over the Asian waitress. Yeah. And then he goes, hey, what race do you think he is? And ra- points over at me. And then the um, the waitress goes, I don't know, Filipino. Mm-hmm. And then the whole table just starts laughing. I, I guess like being being Filipino is a punchline in that state. Oh <laughs> it's like being Filipino. <laughs> oh. And then the the punchline of the whole story is that the little girl stands up yeah. and she goes, "Filipinos are garbage." <laughs> oh and it makes me laugh so hard at how horrified everyone looks. <laughs> And all of this really happened. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, I tell this story on stage because it really happened. And now they won't talk to me anymore because they claim that it never happened. Why would you make that up? I'm not a good enough writer to make that up. Sure. <laughs> yeah. You two don't look the same at all. Right. Who would write that? It's the yeah mind of a little. And by the way, the little girl and I now, well, not after the after the Hulu special, but she and I get along really well now. Mm. I thought that it was okay to make fun of a little girl for being, I don't know. Right. And because it's stuff like that, it's like, well, she picked that up from somewhere. Yeah. You know, like it's hard. It's not necessarily easy to be mad at a kid. Yeah. You know, because it's like, okay, well, you don't know what you're saying. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, the joke was you know, a garbage thing. Was yeah. A quick wit, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how far into your relationship did this happen? Oh, it was like a year and a half in. Okay. Yeah, they hated me. Well, you know what? They they will never admit that they hated me. Sure. They just didn't like me. Right. Um, was it purely because of your ethnicity? I don't think so, but I don't think it helped. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just like when you're when you're different. I think people subconsciously go, "This is really a different person." Right. And I wish that she was with somebody that was more the same as us. Right. I think I was so othered because of my difference. They may have been indifferent to you as a person, but then the ethnicity put them over the edge of like, ah, oh, we don't like him. Yeah. That kind of yeah. thing, maybe. Yeah. Ugh, that's... I always try to get them to like me. Well, some of the family members really liked me, but the, that's you know, good. the main members of the family never really clicked with me. Yeah. Wow. Um, so then what did they think about? the transition oh they were ecstatic oh really they're liberals oh that's they, true they love they love uh <laughs> <laughs> oppressed groups don't you know <laughs> <laughs> like when i came out they were thrilled they were like i can't wait to accept her oh my god i can't wait to call her her and impress her you know i can't wait to in conversation with my friends yeah. say oh my daughter and her and her transitions. transitioning you know your yeah, transgender yeah, yeah. girlfriend because we're so welcoming and open yeah I, I think the joke i do is that uh my like sometimes uh liberals treat minorities like we're pokemon go characters like <laughs> hey honey i cut this asian tranizard <laughs> you want to call it brave or should i you know <laughs> they were so quick to like share their stories of like like one day we're sitting in the car and uh you know no one's really talking and then the the family member goes you know we hired a gay person <laughs> and i'm just like i don't fucking care <laughs> i don't know this person are they a good worker like <laughs> i we you know we hired a gay person also not not the same right you know yeah <laughs> not the same at all no but uh <laughs> yeah. yeah it was it would be things like that the whole trip were you surprised that they took it well? Uh, no. No? Okay. Because I don't think that they, again, they don't like me. They like the idea of me. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. Yeah. I'm just going to ask maybe stupid questions. Sure. Because I think a lot of people don't know the ins and outs of, oh, yeah. you know, this. The ins and oh. outs, huh? <laughs> ah, pun <laughs> t- ah, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> Go Kevin Klein. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, what was that conversation with your girlfriend like, like initially? Oh, I sent her a text message on fa- oh, a Facebook message. Mm-hmm. And I just wrote, hi, baby, I'm a woman. I love you. Wow. <laughs> During the work day. <laughs> this ruined her work day. And she goes, oh, are you going to tell Facebook? That was how the conversation went. 
<laughs> that's how unsurprised she was. Wow. Okay. And then so, I told Facebook and I said, hey, I'm a woman and love you all. And that's how I came out. I did it wrong. <laughs> Apparently, you're not supposed to do it that way. Really? Apparently, you're supposed to do it slowly and ease people in because mm. it's a shock to people. And you're, so, you're also not supposed to do it that way for yourself because it's a shock to yourself. You're supposed to like tell people like one on one and do uh-huh. it. And I just did it all wrong. <laughs> I came out wrong. <laughs> did it what did it feel fine to do it that way? Did you it regret felt it? So overwhelming. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wish I had kind of taken more time with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How long had that been building up to be able to send just like a seemingly simple Facebook message? Had you been I guess building the up answer to it? the answer, the easy answer would be like my whole life. Right. Yeah. But the moment when I realized it. From the moment I realized it, which was in my car, had to pull over and start crying. I was on my way back to work. I was like on my lunch break. Mm. And from the time I figured it out to the time I put it on Facebook was about 20 minutes. Wow. I just like I share my life online. I share my life in my stand up. Mm -hmm. So it was like it was nothing for me to share it with people. Right. I just had to I had to tell her first and then I told my friend Evan. I told both of them, hey, I'm transgender. Mm-hmm. And I just realized it. Wow. And then I told the world. Yeah. And and uh, surprisingly accepting. A lot of acceptance, a lot of likes, which I like, you know. I'm yeah. a whore for Facebook likes. <laughs> I think we all are. Yeah. And, uh, but then like 15 people like immediately unfriended me also. Wow. I was like, man, that's, I was surprised how many people unfriended me. Were there people that truly surprised you? Like, yeah. You know. Some people I went to high school with. Yeah. That, you know, that I thought we were cool, but apparently not. We don't talk anymore. Wow. Yeah. Were some of them like, oh, I guess that's not surprising. But then some of them were like, you know. A lot of, well, a lot of them were surprised, but some of them were just like, oh, that's what that whole thing is with you. (laughs) Like whatever that thing is with you, that's what it was. We couldn't put our (laughs) finger on it. Yeah. Um, (laughs) I couldn't look at anyone in the eyes before I came out. Really? Yeah. Like I always, I felt like. I was I would be exposing myself, but I don't know what I would be exposing. So I was there was always like this concrete door that I was trying to get through, and I I didn't know everybody. Yeah, wow. Well, what was it in that moment in your car? Did something happen to make you? Or did it just hit you in the face? Like oh, it was a song that was playing that Mm -hmm. I played. Like I I listened to a band called Rilo Kylie, Mm. and it's a very girly band, Mm -hmm. and uh, I usually like sing it quietly in my car because I was in a really good mood. I like rolled the windows down and I turned it up and I sang it just out loud, just being flamboyant Mm -hmm. for maybe like the first time ever just openly. Yeah. And then I was like, Oh my God, this is, this feels right. Mm -hmm. And then I started like my whole life, like flash before my eyes. And I realized that when I was a kid, I used to like wear jewelry and stuff. And Mm -hmm. I used to like, not that pink is only for women, but I loved pink and, you know, I loved wearing pink and, like I had, I had drama class and, you know, you had to put on makeup for drama class, like when you're in a play mm-hmm. and I would just leave it on mm-hmm. for like two or three days. Like I said, I didn't want to wipe off the makeup Yeah, and all these memories came back and I just, just flooded me. Like my whole life flooded me. Yeah. yeah. And I had goosebumps all over my body too. It was like the weirdest experience. I don't know what a religious experience feels like, but I think that's what it must feel like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's got, to, I mean, yeah, it's just a profound feeling that you can't really describe out of it. Yeah. Wow. Man. So, uh, so now, so once you've, you've said it, you've realized it, the people that you care about have accepted you. What is the next, like, what's the next step? Like the what next, did you do? Oh man. The next step was like, all I can think of was, um, I hope I don't like the clothes. Mm. Cause that would mean that I, Maybe I'm not transgender, you know, mm-hmm. it was, it was fear. Mm. It was fear. It took me three weeks to go to the store to buy clothes. And I remember I had this like pink top and this skirt and I was like, man, please don't like this. Please let this be a phase, you know? And mm. I put on the skirt and the pink and I, I looked in the mirror and I smiled like for the first time ever. And I was like, oh man, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm totally <laughs> fucked. Like I love it. Like I love it more than anything. I can't not love it and uh and then you know we went to buy we went to buy makeup and stuff and um went to my friend jared's house 
He put on he put on the clothes. I mean, I, I put on the clothes and he put on this the makeup for me. Mm-hmm. And I looked in the mirror and I I was like, man, I I love the way I look. Yeah. And we put it on Facebook and people were like, oh my god, you know. I was still Robert, but like you know, Robert, you know, he looks great and he looks great. And then I think about a month later, I changed my name to Robin. And I say, like, you know, please use she if you can, if you can remember. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm Robin now. Was that just a convenience thing or does Robin have any meaning to you? No, I just like like Robin is like a bird, you know, mm-hmm. that flies, you know, and mm-hmm. I was like, Robin sounds like a nice name. I don't want to be Roberta. No. Robert, Roberta sounds kind of old. You <laughs> yes, know? it does. Yeah. No offense to anyone that transitioned and is named Roberta who is listening to this right now. <laughs> yeah. oh, your, your, your giant Roberta transgender <laughs> fan base. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's a lot there's of them. Yeah. A lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> So, but that's interesting. So at the, at the store, when you were trying on the clothes, so you were actually hoping that the, you didn't want this to be true. Yeah. Because, because it's if okay. it's, if it's true, that means that I have to go out in public like this. Mm-hmm. And, um, I don't think I have the guts to do it because mm. it's really scary. And also you, there's internalized transphobia. Mm. Like, uh, you don't just like come out as transgender or come out as gay and all those thoughts that you grew up with, they don't just go away. They're still with you. Mm-hmm. You just think it about yourself. So I was, I'd be like thinking, you're you, God, you're so gay for liking this and you look, you look ridiculous and stuff, you know, like all those thoughts. So I was like, man, if I don't like it at all, then maybe this whole thing was a phase and, and I could go back to living like a normal life, you know, unquote, a normal, yeah. miserable life. Right. Yeah. And uh, no, I loved it. So, yeah, yeah. No, it's we were just talking about when we were when we first started. We we're talking about like '90s nostalgia and stuff, and it's amazing. Even watching shows like Boy Meets World or any of this stuff, like anything gay related, was the punchline for so <laughs> many jokes. Right? Yeah, the show Friends. Oh yeah, almost the entire Chandler character. Yeah, is you're gay. Yeah, ha, 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 ha. yeah, really funny. So I mean, it's you know, it's not surprising that. Those would be all the feelings you've had, you yeah. know, or, you know, that was the overwhelming feeling when you were trying on the clothes, you know, like, cause that's what we all grew up with. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. Do you feel like it's getting, I feel like, well, I don't know. Do you feel like it's getting better with shows as far as writing that, um, you know, not making gay a joke? Oh yeah. The, on shows. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely better. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's good. I mean, there's not a lot of trans representation. Sure. Which I think is, I don't know. This is going to be controversial to say. I just think there's not very many transgender actors and actresses. Mm. And I think like give it a couple years and you'll see more. Yeah. But I think some people are really upset right now that there's not enough. And I'm like, well, there's just not a lot of trans people don't go go into acting and, you know, theater and stuff, you know. Right. Like we need transgender doctors and stuff, too. Right. So I don't know. That's just my opinion on it. Mm-hmm. We'll give it a couple more years. Because that seemed like the the tough scenario with um who was it Scarlett Johansson? Yeah. That, all that controversy. Yeah. Where did you fall with all of that? Oh, I think that you, you, you should ha- get a trans person to play a trans role. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean like, yeah, even though there's not a lot, if you're gonna write a script with a trans person in it, mm-hmm. don't give it to somebody who's not trans. Sure. That's how, that's just what I think. Right. Yeah. yeah because it's something that maybe one day, mm-hmm. maybe one day, cause you know, straight people play gay people nowadays. Right. right. And, Maybe one day if there's more acceptance and there's more trans people out there and trans people are playing non-trans people, mm-hmm. you know, when that's happening, then I think it, it might be okay, like 10 years down the road. Right. Do you think it's a situation where it's such a, you know, in the scheme of movements, and I don't know if movement's the right word, but it's a fairly new movement that, you know, trans individuals just, they want to, they don't want others to have it. It's, I don't mean that in a selfish way, but it's like, this is we're still figuring this out like yeah. we this is our thing i just think it's like we want visibility right we we don't want to be invisible in like the grand scheme of things because like i think there's a uh, a fear that that's killing us mm-hmm. and i think that's a very triggering thing to say because like trans people get killed on a fairly regular basis mm-hmm. so it's like stop killing us and stop stop making us disappear yeah um on a unrelated note well I'm curious, how did your, I imagine, how did your comedy change after you came out? Oh, or I, you transitioned. Yeah, I talk about being trans and I do jokes about being trans and talk about coming out as trans. And I talk a lot, of, I, there's a lot of trans material now. 
but I also just like am braver with other subjects. Mm-hmm. Like I'll just talk about, oh, I want to talk about professional wrestling. I'll talk about it. You know, like mm-hmm. I, I'm just more like a, a better performer. Sure. Like when I'm on stage now, like back then I was kind of an anxious little, like I want to show them that Asians can move and be quick and do this and that, you know, yeah. but I was also compensating for something. Mm-hmm. Now I'm on stage and I'm kind of like, take it easy. I'm kind of slow. I walk around the stage. It's like the stage is mine and I, it belongs to me. Yeah. And you're all going to be um, surprised by how good I am. Cause I know you don't think I'm very good right now because of the way I look. But don't worry, I got this. Yeah, I, I always have that kind of feel when I'm on stage. Yeah, I imagine you, it's just confidence now. Yeah, a lot you're of confidence. Com- you, know, you know who you are. Yeah. Well, I'm just curious. What was your material like before you you transitioned? Was it just awkward, like virgin it was jokes? A lot of yeah, like oh, I I have I'm bad at sex, and then isn't it, or oh, uh, white people are weird to Asian people, and you know, just like a mostly like based like sex and race, and mm. I don't remember like much else I talked about. Really. Sure. Yeah. 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 I would imagine there was a pretty substantial change. Um, well, you've also, you also apparently have a, uh, fear of driving. Is that right? Yeah, <laughs> I do. Yeah. I took a lift here <laughs> okay. from Orange County, which is not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate you coming no, out. <laughs> no. And, uh, because I decided a few days ago, that, you know, because like a year ago, I had a I had a fear of going to L.A., driving to L.A. Mm-hmm. And then a few months ago, I, I started driving to L.A. by myself. I would get these like mini panic attacks driving to L.A. And um, I told my therapist about four days ago, you know what? I overcame my fear of driving to L.A. and it wasn't fucking worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care anymore if it's a fear in my life. <laughs> I don't care how much it costs me. I am never driving to LA again because every time I, I come here, it's like, oh, I thought we took the five. No, you're going to take the 405 to the 110 and then you're going to take the 710 and then you're going to take the one or whatever, right. the 10 and then the five. It's like, and then you get here and there's no parking anywhere ever. No. So it's like, no, I, I hate it. I hate, I hate driving a lot. I've gotten better at it because I can actually drive on the freeway now, but for a long time, I couldn't even drive on the freeway. Yeah. Because my parents told me when I was younger, don't drive on the freeway because you'll die. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was- <laughs> because my parents, my parents do not drive on the freeway <laughs> and they bestowed their, yeah, that on me. That, so that's great. And was this, did you, you, you grew up in Maine or Maryland? No, I grew up in California. Oh, you grew up in California. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I grew up here and I don't, I don't know if I can ex- describe to you how embarrassing this is for me, but, um, I, I had to drive a friend home from work and it was out of the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when, you know, getting home from work, I had to take the 405 freeway. Okay. So I hated going home from work yeah. every day. I would just get these like a little mini panic attacks. Right. right? It's a nightmare. So instead of taking a left to go to the 405, I had to take a right to drive her home. And so I drive her home and it's like three miles, not even far away, but I kept going, Amanda, where's your house? I don't see your house anywhere. <laughs> And she was like, no, it's another mile. Don't worry about it. It's like, it's really close. You just, and I, I took a left and I, and I, you know, uh, you know, I said bye to her. And then she goes, you know, if you just go one street up, you take the five and you'll, you'll be home. And I'm like, I'm not taking a different freeway. I don't know why you're telling me to take a different freeway. And, and I'm like, I'm going to take a left and then another right. And I'm going to slowly go on the 405 entrance from a different angle. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm going to do. And then there was like two, do you know, there's like a fork in the road. Mm-hmm. There's a 405 or there's this other road. Yeah. And I went on the other road no. and I just go, fuck, <laughs> fuck, fuck. Where am I? I'm hitting my car. Like there's a dent in my, there's like, there's dents in my car for this. <laughs> oh my God. What the fuck is this? So I have to like turn around and then, and then I, I do it again. I go to where I'm going to get on the four or five, five entrance. I miss it again. The second time, and I and then I, oh, I, I I turn around, and I see a star, uh, no, a Barnes and Noble, uh-huh. and then I just go into the Barnes and Noble, and I go, I'm gonna wait until nighttime when there's no cars. <laughs> oh, no. I'm just gonna go into this Barnes and Noble, and I'm gonna start reading a book. Mm-hmm. And I found Tuesdays with Maury, right? <laughs> yeah. I find this book Tuesdays with Maury, and it's I think the book is about being brave. Right. Right. And like confronting death, confronting death and like overcoming your fears. And, you know, it's supposed to inspire you and make you feel good about yourself. But I'm reading. I read. I read the whole book. (laughs) 
that's why that's how long I stayed in this Barnes and Noble for. I, I, I stayed, stayed for the whole thing. And, um, all I could think of was, look, Maury could live his life and you can't even drive him on the freeway. You fucking pussy. <laughs> that's all I could think of every chapter. <laughs> you fucking pussy. <laughs> Instead of having the book inspire me to be better. It just made me feel bad about myself, man. Maury beat you down. <laughs> yeah. Maury beat me down, dude. Oh no. I forgot how I got home that night. I think I just took another right and then I got lucky yeah. and I just went, ah, oh, woo, I did it. Woo. I was like screaming, like honking my horn at nobody. <laughs> yeah, dude. I have such a fear of driving. You know, even when I take a lift now, I just try to close my eyes so I don't look at the traffic. Yeah. Like if my driver sucks, I don't mm. want to know. Were you in like a bad accident or anything? Like as a kid or nope. just in general? I mean, it's under it's, everything you've described. Every, is understandable. Ev everything that's on the road is a weapon. Right. So. Yeah. I think when you really break it down and if you think about it, like, yeah, everyone's just driving a tank at 80 miles an hour. Yep. And uh, I don't like it. There's something about even I don't know that there's any other cities that refer to their highways with a the in front of it. Yeah. You know, or the, you know, the 101, the 405. Right, yeah. Which just makes it seem even more epic and absurd. Yeah. You know? Uh, no, an, I get it. It's an eye chart around here, man. The 101, the 110, and the 10 next to each other. What is that? It's chaos. It's awful. Yeah, it's insane. I, I wish we had uh, self-driving cars right now. Mm-hmm. So that I don't have to feel like a pussy <laughs> reading Tuesdays with Maury. <laughs> 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 that is so that's the funniest context i've heard of anyone reading that book because like i you know i had like a very uh you know my experience is like i was staying at my grandmother's house uh alone uh you know visiting her for like a, a couple weeks and i i found it in the crawl space and i thought oh what a lovely book i'll give it a read and yeah. it was like i had conversations with her at night about it it was all like yeah very warm and, and you know and you're just sitting there like god damn it <laughs> fucking maury <laughs> maury's man maury's brave as fuck man <laughs> just rub it in my face <laughs> i get it you're strong-willed yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man um well so how long have you been doing comedy uh six and a half years okay all yeah. right and it seems like now things are kind of starting to break your way. Yeah, I'm actually doing show like I'm doing like uh, big shows. Like I opened up for Anthony Jeselnik at the Largo. That's awesome. Yeah, that was the scariest. Of, of, all, of, all of a sudden, I'm getting like a Twitter direct message from him. Yeah. Not even like a manager messaged me. It was like, this is Anthony Jeselnik. Like what? The? I'm a huge fan, you know. I, I performed for him. And then I, I uh, featured for Whitney Cummings recently. Yeah. That was awesome too. You know, she actually text messaged me. Like I'm, I have the, you know, I'm not trying to brag, but you know, I'm bragging. <laughs> um, no, but uh, you know, I'm getting these big shows. I'm getting like meetings with like networks and stuff and people who are like show creators and like mm -hmm. they're scouting me to write maybe. And uh, I don't know if anything is going to come out of it. Right. I feel like in comedy, there's always a lot of close calls. Yeah. And then you don't, and it gets kind of swept up from underneath you. Mm -hmm. So when all this stuff fails, maybe I'll come back and tell all the embarrassing stories of like <laughs> when I, I never made it, you know? <laughs> oh, I came close six times, man. Well, and I mean, I feel like that's, that's a good uh, mindset to be in, which is that like, this is all great and hopefully something happens. Yeah. But, you know, meetings are meetings. And actually until you're like, on the set or whatever, you know, it's, yeah. um, but cause you also have a, a Hulu special out, right? I have a Hulu special out. Is it, is it an hour, half hour? Yeah, it's an hour. That's amazing. Yeah. If you just look up Robin Tran on Hulu, mm -hmm. you'll find it. Um, when did that come out? Um, I recorded it a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. It came out August 15th. Okay. So yeah, it just came out. It just came out. Yeah. That's great. And you've been getting good feedback and everything. Well, besides my girlfriend's family. Oh, well, yeah, I guess yeah. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who hate it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've been getting a lot of good feedback. Some of the stories I told here, you can hear on the special. Okay. Yeah. Like part, like not verbatim. Right. But yeah. they're like similar. The Tuesdays with Maury story was just for this not not exclusive, for the, uh, exclusive. Uh, thank you yeah <laughs> i'm honored yeah. yeah that'd be funny if it was the exact same way that you told it on stage but just <laughs> here just yeah. for talking to me but you're like well and then, you know it's like yeah. you're performing this whole stage. thing this whole thing has been a hulu uh, plug <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um what did your uh, how did you uh 
find comedy. What was that? Oh, um, I saw Chris Rock doing Bigger and Blacker when I was like a kid. And I mm-hmm. was like, that's the hardest I've ever laughed. Yeah. And I just want to do that for a living. But also my dad used to do comedy. My dad used to just like kind of talk on the radio and he was funny with it. Yeah. Or he would like sing at weddings, so funny songs. So I think that whatever he has, mm. I have it too. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, he's really proud of me. I, I got into the Vietnamese newspaper like in in Garden Grove. Nice. So like, yeah. So like to them, I made it. That sure. was that was what finally did it. Not my Comedy Central, not my Hulu. <laughs> I got into the Vietnamese newspaper, right. <laughs> the local paper. <laughs> yeah. So that's cool. So I imagine then were they supportive from the beginning or no, no, no. <laughs> my dad was my, my dad. My dad thought it was cool that I wanted to do something that he wanted to do. Right. But he he also never made money doing it. Mm-hmm. So he's like, look, I know you love it. Just do it as a hobby, but find a job, mm-hmm. you know, and I couldn't ever do both. I could never just do a job and do comedy. It was always too much. And I would not do comedy when I had a job. Right. Did you have some like odd jobs along the way? Oh, yeah. I used to um, used to work in a movie theater. Uh-huh. I I was such a bad employee that I would actually um pay my coworkers to finish my shift if I didn't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> like I would, I would actually like pull a hundred dollars out of the ATM, which it was more than I was making during that shift. <laughs> and I would just hand it over. I used to be like, Wait, Rosa, can you like, can you finish counting inventory for me? Cause I'm tired. <laughs> and I would just lay on the floor until like, <laughs> You wouldn't even leave. You'd stick no, around. No, I would stick around because I, I, I couldn't clock out. Right, right, right. You know, I had to wait till my shift was yeah. over. So I just lay down until my shift was over. Hey, you were a better movie theater employee than I. Yeah. Uh, I also worked in one in high school. And I don't know if you had them, but we had, we wore the headsets. Um, oh, no, we didn't have Yeah, because it, it was a fairly large theater. Yeah. So it was just so all the ushers would be like, oh, I'm in theater four. I'm in theater eight. So I took advantage of that. And so I would just listen to where people were and I would just go into a theater and just watch a movie. <laughs> and then if, they, if anybody would be like, you know, uh, uh, anyone have eyes on Joe? I'd just like hop up and be like, oh, just put it up on uh, theater four. <laughs> just these filthy theaters because of you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's really funny. Yeah. yeah, I would just sit there and watch movies all day. Yeah. And then uh, it was fun at the end of the night to to take all the leftover popcorn and bag it in a trash bag and then show up at a party like, got the popcorn. <laughs> I think people like me just because of my popcorn. Condition. Yeah, that's funny, man. Yeah. I always took naps at work. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I had to push carts at a different job. Yeah. Pushing carts into the store. Mm-hmm. If if I if it was really slow, I'd walk around the corner mm-hmm. and I would lay down in the parking lot and I would just nap. <laughs> I would just nap openly in the parking lot. <laughs> I, I'm not made to have a full time job. Cars be damned. Yeah, I don't drive care. around me. Yeah, just drive around me. <laughs> just drive on the dirty concrete floor. Was that at a grocery store that you were doing carts? It was uh, at a you know one of those like I don't want to say the name of the store like yeah. like you know like superstore. Yeah, yeah, one of those. Okay, okay. Because yeah. yeah, I also worked at a grocery store, uh, and what I loved was they called it um, returning the orphans. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was the that's phrase. A, that's a terrible name. It's a terrible name. But what it meant was the items that people would bring to the counter and not want. Yeah. They'd put all those into a cart. And oh, they'd be like, oh, yeah. go return the orphans. <laughs> uh, yeah. Terrible name. That's a terrible <laughs> <laughs> really bad name. Uh, but it was enjoyable because I would just take my sweet ass time and walk around the store and yeah. oh, I don't know where the biscuit goes. I yeah. got to find it. I don't know. And uh, that would turn into like three hours. And then eventually they stopped. So you were bad at working, too. I was terrible. This is why you do this, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Which, incidentally, isn't paying me. So, you know, that's the struggle. (laughs) Yeah, it's the struggle. Yeah. I'm losing money today. So it's okay. It's okay for exposure, you know. But I didn't have to go. I mean, we're just sitting in my kitchen. Yeah, we're just sitting here talking. Yeah. Yeah, it worked out okay. But yeah, no, it's every job I, you know, I had no work ethic until I got out here and got my dream job, which was working um, with Danny McBride oh. uh, at Rough House Pictures. Wow. And um, I got fired like eight months into the job. Oh, my God. Because I had no work ethic. And I didn't know it. I didn't know I was being lazy. You know, oh. I just wasn't like he would. They would just hint at things that they meant me. I should do them. Yeah. And then I didn't do them. Yeah. And it totally like caught me off guard, yeah. you know, and I'd just been promoted to writer's assistant on Eastbound and Down. Oh, man. And yeah, so I like, you know, since then, I've just been Mr. 
you know, just making, I've just been busting my ass for the last like eight years. Oh, dang, but that dude. was such a blow to be like 22 and be like, I'm set. Yeah. I got my dream job. These guys are loyal. And then, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like I have a really bad work ethic also. Yeah. Yeah. I still like after this, I'm going to go home. I'm going to, I'm going to take a nap. Yeah. Cause it just <laughs> took so much out of me. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know if that's normal. Like yeah. I'm just going to lay down for hours. There are days where this is the only thing that I will do in a day is yeah. chat with somebody. Yeah. And it does feel like I had a full day, you know, yeah. and my girlfriend comes home from like a normal person job. Yeah. Having, yeah, you know, too, yeah. And I know she's judging me a little bit, <laughs> which is fair, you know, because it's just like, well, what, what'd you do today? It's like, oh, <laughs> chat, chat with somebody. Okay. <laughs> Did you make any money? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, this is, this is an investment. You got to, yeah, you know. Yeah. Investment. That's yeah. what I say too. Yeah. This exactly. is all an investment. Yeah. 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 And she's incredibly supportive. But that's not, but you know, it's just for anyone who doesn't do, who isn't inclined, who doesn't have the, the desire to perform right it doesn't make any sense it's yeah. like yeah but you're not making any money <laughs> it's yeah like, yeah but i could <laughs> right one day <laughs> yeah. one day it'll happen yeah exactly um but yeah so I'm, I'm 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 glad to hear that you know it looks like you probably do you, do you still have a day job oh no there you go no see that's I, the victory i lay down a lot <laughs> Like you have no, like this is how I opened a different podcast that never aired the episode because it was so boring to hear, but I'm going to tell you right Please. now, I just, I lay down most of the time and I, there's no, there was no music. There's no TV. I'm not even scrolling my phone. I'm just literally laying down and I don't, and I've told my, my therapist, my psychiatrist, my girlfriend, I've told numerous people cause I'm kind of worried about that. Yeah. And they're always just like, well, do you get up when you have to? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. They're like, well, then who gives a fuck? But I'm like, but I'm just <laughs> laying down in silence. Isn't that alarming? Like, I'm not even like getting up to watch TV. <laughs> Isn't that weird that I'm going to do that right when I get home? <laughs> Don't you think it's weird? Do you think it's weird? Do you think a little it's bit, a little bit? I, I can understand that where, why you would think it's a little weird. But, Are you, you but what, what, do you just does your brain shut off entirely? Are you thinking about anything? I'm breathing. OK, yeah. that's good. That's good. And uh and I'm trying not to freak out about what I have to do. Okay. Whatever it is. Yeah. Because I have a show tonight. Okay. And I'm probably going to go home and lay down because my body's going to be like, I don't want to do the show. Mm -hmm. and I have anxiety, you know, and that's yeah. how my anxiety comes out is just laying down. And then, uh, and then I get up and do the show. Mm. But back then I just would just cancel. Oh yeah. And I just watched smoke pot, watch TV instead, you know? Mm. So I, I think everyone's like, this is an improvement that you are <laughs> yeah. now a psychopath that lays down. <laughs> I'm on so much medication, dude. I'm like, is this medication making me do this? Cause I got bipolar, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm just taking a shitload of medication. It's like, is the medication making me lay down more? Is it? I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm trying to figure that out. I know this is not what your podcast is about. No, and I, I apologize. This is about whatever the conversation goes. Man, dude, like, cause uh, there's comedians like Theo Vaughn, for instance, mm. who is like, just go, 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 right. get up, you know, don't be lazy. And I'm just like, Oh man, I, I talked for 45 minutes on a podcast. I'm going to lay down for four hours, man. That was like exhausting, you know? <laughs> like what, what kind of fucking work ethic is that? I'm, I don't know if I can do it. You know, I don't know if I can do anything. What, can I do anything for a living with that kind of work ethic? Thankfully, I'd say stand up comedy is the one that you may be able to get away with. Right? You think so? Because I mean, you basically you, are free all day. Yeah. And then you just got to get it together for like an hour and a half tops, including yeah. going there, hanging out, you know. Yeah. You basically have all day to sit and think about it. Now, that, that might have something to do with the anxiety. Do you, or if you're just sitting there overthinking about the show and stuff, have you thought like, oh, if I did something else to stimulate my brain? No, I no, dude. You know what? When no. I try to distract myself, like go have lunch with a friend. Yeah. Okay. The day before my Comedy Central uh, like taping mm -hmm. for, for a roast battle. Mm hmm. It was like the most nerve wracking day, you know, the, the day before. Mm -hmm. And uh, my friend wanted to have lunch and she was telling me a story. Yeah. And I was just looking through her the whole time. I was staring through her. And then like she finished her story and I just looked at her and I said, I got to go home. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just caught lunch short. I, I couldn't I couldn't even be out. Like, I'm like, I shouldn't be driving right now. That's how anxious I am. Yeah. I just need to lay the fuck yeah. down. Yeah. And then I just do that. That's all I do. And if it works, then go. I mean, you know great oh, man 
But you know, yeah, it's it might be a weird. thing. It's fucking weird, man. <laughs> trying to figure myself out. My my girlfriend said the, the, these exact words over the weekend, Labor Day weekend, when I was laying down a lot. Mm-hmm. She said, "Life is hard enough without having to guilt yourself for doing something innocuous." And I was like, "Oh shit, that's why people aren't worried because I'm not hurting anybody." Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or yourself. You're yeah. Just, you're just laying there. Yeah. Eh. It could be worse. Yeah. That's not bad. You can cut this whole part out. No, I don't want to. I did a different podcast where I opened with this stuff mm-hmm. and they never aired the episode. You know, I yeah. told you that and I was like, I it's think it's funny? interesting. You think so? Yeah, I don't know. I do. Yeah. Do you have any idea what the friend you had lunch with was talking about? No. Because that's hilarious. Like, can you imagine like, if it was like a really intense, <laughs> she was getting a, a load off and then as soon as she stopped talking, you were just like, I got to go. She actually probably was. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. Because she, we both share our mental health issues together. Oh boy. Oh so she was God. probably sharing about some insecurities that she had. And I, I did apologize. Yeah. But I, t- I did tell her I need to go home right now. <laughs> like, I, I didn't even say bye, really. I guess I need to go home right now. Yeah. I just laid down for, for six hours. For the sake of the story, it would have been funny. If she was like, I just feel like, like no one's listening to me <laughs> and I can't count on anyone to be around. And yeah, then you just, I, I got to go. I got to go home. <laughs> 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 yeah. Maybe it was her fault, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. It sounds like you've got things figured out. Maybe. Yeah. You know, comfortable with who you are. You like to take awake naps. What have you coined a phrase for this yet? Yeah, um, like what like just you're laying down? other people call it meditation that's yeah that's true i'm not I'm, meditating it's bullshit right yeah yeah but that's a nice way i guess say i fucking lay down a lot that's what i yeah. call it yeah and i like that you put some stank on it too <laughs> yeah yeah i fucking lay down <laughs> you got something to say about it yeah <laughs> um yeah laying down telling jokes yeah sounds pretty solid to me oh thanks man um well, where can people find you on social media? Uh, I'm Robin Tran zero four on everything, Great. except for my email, where I'm Robert Tran zero four, <laughs> where <laughs> because that's how lazy I am that I haven't that my <laughs> Jeff Ross told me that my social media hasn't transitioned yet. <laughs> still, so my driver's license still says Robert on it. You know, <laughs> he's like, oh, one day I'll change it. It's just it's I'm too, to I'm too busy laying down right. to, to change my email. Yeah. Uh, real quick, what was the joke I, I saw you uh, about? Is Tran your real last name? Oh, yeah. What, how does it go? Um, it may be really old or something, but it, it no, I, I have I do it like in the beginning of my set. My name is Robin Tran. I'm transgender. And that's like, oh, my name is Robin Tran and I'm transgender. And that is a coincidence. <laughs> People always think that I transitioned for one pun. That's not why I would do it. Um, the, the only. Oh, yeah. And that's that's basically. The yeah, 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 yeah. That, that made I've, me laugh. I've, I've done the joke so many times. Oh, I'm sure. It's like, you know, Radiohead has that song Creep. Yes. And then they made another song, My Iron Lung, because they hate Creep so much. Yeah. I think my second special is going to be how much I hate my trans jokes, <laughs> <laughs> how much I hate all of them. <laughs> you, you should already accept me. I shouldn't have to explain. Yeah. Anyway. Damn whatever. straight. Yeah. Well, hopefully me asking you that put you over the edge and now yeah, you're hope. totally <laughs> done with it. I just, fuck everybody. <laughs> I just flipped over the table. I'm like, fuck this. Yeah, Tran is not my fuck. It's my real fucking name. All right. What the fuck? I'm not your fucking monkey. Tell your goddamn Tran jokes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and one more time. What's the name of the Hulu special? Uh, <laughs> oh, I have to, you get to say that again. No, no. It's comedy invasion. But at the end, it's Asian, not a- I N V A S I A N comedy invasion. Okay. Or just look up Robin Tran. There you You'll go. find it. Robin Tran. Okay. Robin awesome. with an I. Yeah. Well, uh, I appreciate you coming all the way from Orange County. Oh yeah. Thanks so much for having me. This was a blast. Good. I'm go- Yeah. I had a great time too. Yeah. All right. Take care. Thank you. That was the episode. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Robin as much as I did. Uh, I really appreciate her coming over. All the way from Orange County, might I add, which that's a bit of a hike. So very happy to have chatted with her. And again, you can follow her on social media. She is at Robin Tran 4 across all social media platforms. You can watch her Hulu special, Comedy Invasion, on Hulu. You can just search Robin Tran to find that. And uh, if you're in the L.A. area, check her out. She's performing all over the place. Again... 
If you enjoyed today's episode, give us that five star rating on iTunes. Just do it. You know you want to. I appreciate it. It means a lot. Just just do it. Like Nike, let's take a knee and give me a five star rating. Are half of you turned off now? Are you not going to listen anymore? I hope not. Just kidding. You can kneel. You can kneel like Nike or stand like Adidas or any other New Balance. I feel like New Balance is standing. New Balance people are standing. Either way, stand, sit, kneel, bop it, twist it, pull it, whatever. Just give us that rating. It means a lot. That's all I've got for this week. Have a wonderful week, and until next Wednesday, keep laughing. <laughs>